Okay. So, so this video is just to explain how to use the feature of keeping focus on two different displays so that you can control both of them at the same time. Um, so, for this example, I'm trying to run two copies of Sonic the Hedgehog. Let me minimize this. So I have two versions of Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, not two versions, two versions of the emulator. Now, this is on my second display, which I'm using for a purpose. Now, each of these should have a different setup for the inputs. One uses the arrows, the other uses the WSADs. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is load up the Genesis Sonic. Uh, and this one. Load. And that one. So now they're both running. Now, when I highlight this one, I can now use my WSADs. I highlight this one. I can now use my arrows. So as you see, the dark spot means it's highlighted. Oops, wrong button. So now I'm running around, doing all the funness. But if I use the arrows, I'm not controlling the left one until I click over here. But now I can't use the left one, or the I'm sorry, the right one. But now I can't use the left one. So to fix this problem, what we do is we use Display Fusion, which is this. Oops, my bad, wrong thing. That's not what I wanted. Settings. Now the reason I'm using my secondary monitor and not my main monitor is because my main monitor uses the regular Windows taskbar, which I use for other things that I do. Um, all my other monitors use the Display Fusion taskbar because it gives it more functionality. So for example, the function we want is built into Display Fusion, and it is called one of these somewhere where'd it go well, it's here somewhere oh here 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 prevent window deactivation keep game focused uh, so basically what you want to do is activate it to show up in the jump list that's the easiest way I found to do it so you, all you do is click on it toggle and jump list then you apply it and click OK and all that I've already done that so now what I do is not that. What the heck did I do? There we go. Okay, so first thing I do is I select the first one. You see it's highlighted down here. Now, what I figured out is that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So the way I found it to work the most effectively is I click on it, to drop it down, bring it back up, right-click on here. Now, you'll see that the title bar went white. Okay, now when I click this, you get a sound effect. I think. I didn't actually hear it. Anyways, when I click it again, drop it down, bring it back up, you'll see it's dark. So, the next step, do the same thing with this one. Drop it down, bring it back up. Drop it down, bring it back up. Now, as long as I don't click on either one of these anymore, as long as I don't click away from either one of these anymore, the effect works. Not click away, but click on either one. If I click on either one, it'll disable it. But I can actually click anywhere else on my desktop. So I can actually bring this forwards, and I can still be controlling the stuff in the background. Mind you, I'm since I'm focused on this, I'm still controlling this too, so that's always the thing you gotta keep in mind. But now I'm controlling them. Okay, so I wanted to expand a little bit on what I showed before. So this process works for lots of different applications. The only limitation is the ability to run multiple copies of the same application or to create multiple copies. So in, in case of the uh, running the Sonic the Hedgehog, I had to create two separate uh, fusion, what are the emulators called? Because in order to control two separate things, I need to be able to set two different key bindings. That being said, some games, you can actually run multiple copies of the same game and just use two different um, profiles, I guess. So to explain that, I've launched two copies of Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, mind you, you need a pretty beefy computer to do more than two. I've been able to do, I think, up to five at once. Um, so all you do is go into your actual uh, folder, find the EOC app file, run it, launch into the game, with your default profile, run it a second time. However, the thing you gotta keep in mind for the second time 
is that you have to have a controller for this game, in particular this game, just because it won't let you use, I mean it will, you can actually do mouse and keyboard on both, but you won't be able to control them individually. So that being said, let me launch into this with a controller. Now for this one, I need to use a different profile, so let me make sure my profile is set up. I don't know how to get the profile to be honest. Okay, yeah, it's already set to a debug client profile. I'm not used to playing with the controller. The UI in this game changes drastically when you use controllers. All right, so for this, I can do a story, join an online game, looking for a LAN game. There's my game. Join in. Now, as I've said, I'm using keyboard and mouse for one and controller for the other one. If you use controller on both, it's actually a lot easier. Now, here's one thing about this game that's a little off. So you'll see right now the frame rate on my right-hand screen is 30. That's because it halves anytime you're not focused on it. And you'll see my mode on the left side is 60. Now, if I click over here, this will eventually switch back to 60. So there's our dilemma. I can control the one on the left using the controller. Can't I? Nope. Oh, that's right. So here comes that next step I was telling you about before. So again, click, drop it down, bring it up. Prevent window deactivation. No, I might have skipped a step here. Hold on. Yep, hold on. There we go. Now, I should be able to click around on this screen while controlling the one on the left of the joystick and controller. So all my mouse input's on the right. This game's nice in the fact that it doesn't steal my mouse for anything else. Now there's certain actions that'll cause problems. I, uh, this is called cross input issues. So for example, if I press start, you'll see a warning pops up over here saying, hey, uh, you can't be doing that crap with the controller right now. Otherwise it ignores the controller completely, but when you press start, it thinks you're trying to do something. So yeah, I just wanted to show that it works with more complex games. Uh, I've used this particular setup to run five copies of the same game with a mod that allows you to run multiple characters with one screen acting just as a map kind of thing. So, yeah.